Hi everyone. I am Hayden. I am Changjin. This is our presentation for the Tianjin 2022 Cold Space Rescue U19. We are team segmentation for and both of us are from Anderson Secondary School, Singapore, Secondary 3. Hi, I am Lim Changjun. I have around 6 years of robotics experience. This is my second RoboCup Cold Space Rescue competition and I participated in the NOI. I am Hayden. I have around 2 years of robotics experience and this is my third time participating in the RoboCup Cold Space Rescue competition. I have also participated in the National Olympiad in Informatics. So, the main objective of the preliminary challenge is to pick up objects to gain points. Each object gives a different number of points and has a different size. Size decreases as points gained from an object increase. Depositing in another objective, each robot can only hold up to 6 objects. Depositing these objects will free up space for more objects and give points according to the object deposited. Obstacles and traps will be present around the map. Going into the trap comes with a penalty of losing all current loaded objects and the point gained from it. Going out of the border comes with a 10 second frozen penalty. There are also double point zones, the blue zones, where all objects pick up there will have a double point when both pick up and deposit it. Some areas, the grey area, will reduce the robot speed by 80% when in it. There are position info loss areas as well. The black outline part will set the simulated position X and Y to 0 when step in it, even though it is not at 0. Last but not least, is to have a strategy to maximize the point gain with all of these factors. Here's a quick summary of the preliminary round map. There are two deposit zones that are close to the trap and swamp. Red objects are mainly concentrated on the left and right side of the map, while cyan and black objects are scattered all over the map. Here is the overview of our presentation. First, we will be talking about picking up objects and then navigating around the map, then targeting specific parts of the map. And then lastly, we will be teaching how to use OpenCV in Python. And at the end, we will include our gameplay and our conclusion. Now is the optimal combination of objects. Before we dive into the combination, I would like to highlight the red, cyan and black objects found around the map. They are worth 10 and 15 and 20 points respectively. Super objects are they are worth 90 are made by a set of red, cyan and black objects after being deposited. There is also a super plus object that is worth 180 points which is made by two sets of objects which is two red, two cyan and two black. Super objects coordinates will also be given which will be super useful, useful information for the robot to pair find. Here's a graph showing the scores for each combination. R for red, C for cyan, and B for black. Super objects will be picked up in this calculation. As seen, the one with one set and super, super objects gain 450 more points than full black. The two set and super plus object combination perform significantly better with 450 more than the R, C, B, 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 B combination. So we aim to get uh, RRCCBB and collect the super plus objects as well. Next, the ordering of objects the robot picks up should also be optimal to minimize the time wasted. We try to get as many pairs of the RRCCBB combo in order to create more super plus objects for points. And we only deposited the objects when the robot is fully loaded with objects. This is all to minimize the time picking up and depositing redundant objects. In order to avoid obstacles and other for pathfinding and navigation, we took a screenshot of the map and simplified the map into simpler colors with Microsoft Paint such as red for walls, yellow for traps, and white for a free spot. OpenCV is then used to make a 2D array of numbers for each different color, such as one for wall and two for a free spot. Here, you can see how the map is converted to a 2D array of numbers. A new separated 2D array can be used to avoid obstacles by detecting whether the robot is near a bad spot such as a trap, swamp, or even a region with a low number of objects. If the robot is near these undesirable areas, it will turn away from it and avoid doing pathfinding. The color sensor is used as a backup for both traps and swamp areas if anything goes wrong with the 2D array. Coordinates are used to avoid borders and ultrasonic sensors are used to avoid obstacles and the steering changes depending on how close the robot is to the object. 
Dealing with position info loss soon, whenever the position is not lost, we'll use the position X and position Y provided by the simulator. But once the robot enters the info loss zone, we will use sine and cosine to calculate the ratio of how much the position X and position Y will differ from the previous position respectively. We will also take the average of two wheels velocity divided by a constant to roughly calculate the robot position. These two ways allows us to extrapolate the robot position quite accurately which would be super useful when the robot enters the info loss zone to keep doing obstacle avoidance and path following accurately. Since coordinates are given for the super objects, anti-posit zones can be figured out by moving the robot in the simulator to a certain spot. Pathfinding can be used to find the shortest path between the robot and the target, as well as the path to it with the help of the 2D array generated for obstacle avoidance to keep track of the obstacles. But the question is, what algorithms should be used? There are four that we thought of, prefer search with the time complexity of O or V plus E, a star with the time complexity of O of V plus E log V, Dextrous with O of V plus E log V, and Bellman Ford with O of V E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. After some thinking, we decided on A star as it uses a heuristic, which is the distance from the robot to the target. This is pathfind to the target more efficiently, so it will be faster than the other algorithms in most cases even though it doesn't have the fastest time complexity. As seen, the A star search shoots towards the target and does not search any unnecessary spots to avoid time wasted, while still guaranteeing the shortest path. Unfortunately, we faced a lot of bugs in the implementation and debugging phase, such as the robot not following the shortest path and the super object's coordinate location could not be stored properly in the variable. Due to super severe time constraints, we decided to abandon this algorithm and resort to other algorithms. So we came up with a different strategy. Split the map into sections where each section has no obstacles in it. This means now section A can go to any other section next to it safely without bumping into any obstacles or traps. This can be done with some simple trigonometry and the path for the robot to go to the deposit zone can be brute first computed by us beforehand. However, a drawback is that it will not be possible to pathfind to super objects as they spawn at random locations. So instead, we kept track of whether a super object existed within the same section as the robot. If it does, then we can simply go, so go towards it with trigonometry. Here's an example of the sectional pathfinding method that we used. If a fully loaded robot is at F, it will first go to the section beside it, which is E, and later section A before moving to section B, and lastly to the deposit zone. Another example is if the robot is at section I. We want to deposit at section H since it's closer there. And we'll first move to section J, then section K, which is next to it, and after that, section H. We use the A10 tool function, basically inverse tangent with modifications, to calculate the appropriate angle for the robot to face in order to go to a spot. We use the built-in turn tool function provided by the simulator and made modifications to it to make the turning smoother to turn and go towards the target. Here is an entire flowchart of a program. It might seem complicated, but I'll break it down piece by piece. The program starts on the green triangular block to check if there are six loaded objects. If yes, the robot will deposit the objects. Else, the robot will check if there is any super object in the section the robot is currently at. If there is, the robot will go to grab the super object. If not, the robot will just go in random motion till the robot detects object on the ground and pick it up. If the robot faces any obstacle, it will avoid them. If there's none, the robot just go straight and this will be the flow of the program. So here's a quick sharing on how to use the OpenCV in Python, which helps to turn an image into a 2D array. Firstly, we will download Python from the Python official website including pip. Then, we need to make sure that the Python file is added to the environment variable path in our computer. You can check if it's downloaded by typing Python in the terminal or command prompt. There should not be any errors. After that, you can finally download OpenCV by typing the command pip install OpenCV Python into the command prompt or terminal. Do note that it is also possible to do it in C++, but we're using Python for convenience sake. After we have the Python downloaded on your computer, we can start off by importing the module by 
type in import cv2 then we set a variable equal to the image that we want to load using cv2 imread function for the arguments we will need to pass in the directory and name of the image file the cv2 imread color argument will tell it to read the image with the original color without any alteration to prevent any error in 2d array in order to display the image, use the cv2 I'm show function. As for argument, pass in image to indicate that it is an image and followed by the variable we have set cv2 I'm read 2 The cv2 wait key 0 and cv2 destroy all windows tells it to display the image until a key has been pressed. To access each pixel scanned by the OpenCV, we can use a simple for loop where image.shape0 gives the height of the image and image shape 1 gives its width. If we are using CV2 and read color, in image ii, there will be three values containing the BVGR, blue, green, and red values of the pixel at that position. You can then finally add if statement to specify the color you want to detect and convert it into a specific number kind of similar to using color sensor in the code space simulator. Additionally, you can play around with the other many functions in OpenCV such as thresholding and convolution which can be used to make useful things like a bitmap or vector map. So now the robot is picking up objects and once six object has been picked up, you start the sectional pathfinding method. So it starts now. And then, once it detects the super object in the same zone, it will start going towards it, which is now. And now he has detected it and picking it up. Then deposits it. I find this competition very interesting as we are able to apply the notch gain to the real world. For example, concepts such as the path finding can be applied to find the shortest path, like in Google Maps, shortest path algorithm, or implemented on robots. Extrapolating the robot's future position will also be useful as the position will not be given in real life, and there will be cases where there is no signal. Increasing efficiency will also be useful to reduce the time taken to finish a specific task. Lastly, avoiding obstacles can be useful in car autopilot technology like the te Tesla car which is very popular now as you can detect nearby obstacles and avoid them efficiently. In conclusion, the strategies we implemented drastically improved it. From an average score of 300 real strategies to an average of 1700 after the changes, and we managed to get 2110 for prelim with an ID run. Our main weaknesses were that the robots were, was not very good at picking up normal objects. Obstacle avoidance was still not that good even after the changes. And super object pathfinding was inefficient as the only path finds when in the same section. In general, we were quite happy with our score but think we could have done much better. For further improvement, I think we can fix the ASAR algorithm and use it on deposit zones and super objects which will be a big game changer. We will also try to have a better obstacle and swamp avoidance to prevent the robot from getting stuck or slowing down. We also deposit immediately if the time is extremely low, for, for example 50 seconds, to maximize the score. We learned how A star works and the heuristics for it, and that it generates the shortest path. We learned how trigonometry can be applied to many things despite seeming to have nothing to do with math. OpenCV was also learned to process images and generate 2D array from it. We learned how to efficiently debug as well with the help of visualizing things and debugging tools. And most importantly, we learned when it is time to give up on a certain idea and adopt a new strategy, especially when facing a lack of time. We would like to show our gratitude to our seniors who have guided us throughout the competition and also our teacher for giving us the opportunity to participate in this competition. We would also like to thank the organizers for organizing and managing such an interesting competition. And lastly, we would like to sign off with a quote, no matter how much falls on us, we keep plowing ahead. That's the only way to keep the roads clear, by Greg Kincaid. This quote summarizes our experience pretty well that we need to persist even when faced with a huge lack of time and many issues. And at the end, 
things will work out. Thank you for your attention and bye.